you has kind of spawned a, a little spate of L.A. glam metal bands, and uh, it's sort of credited to you, at least as the originators of the whole movement. God, we, he caused a glitter war. No, he doesn't want no photos. <laughs> well, that's right. Uh, uh, about it. Well, well, you can go in here. Is it okay to take a picture of you, though? Uh, yeah, well, I'll, I'll take some when we're done. Yeah, I'll take some when we're done. No. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, but uh, often uh, people have been turning to Aeros Aerosmith, like uh, you guys sort of uh, nicked the sound from them. I don't know if we nicked from any one band. We were, you know, rock and roll fans. It's like any rock and roll band, you can't you can't really listen to a Motley Crue album and say it sounds like Aerosmith. Um, you know, there's definitely an Aerosmith influence, Zeppelin influence, Rolling Stone influence. <coughs> you know, a lot of blues. Um, I I don't really think we took it from anybody, but if we are compared to uh, Aerosmith, it, it, that's a very high compliment to be in the same company as such a great band. Why do you think you triggered them? They're the little way. Well, I mean, when something works, yeah, everybody everyone does. does it in Los Angeles. You know, when punk was happening, everybody was, you know, a punk. And that's where we came out of was a punk movement. You know, that's kind of where our hard edge attitude came from in the music. And, uh, you know, when something works and you look a certain way, everyone thinks that they look that way. They'll make that it. That they're going to make it. And looks have never really been a f the major factor for Motley Crue. We just... This is the way we look, and uh, people trying to put on the glitter to make great rock and roll is kind of ass backwards, in our opinion, you know. Mm -hmm. But like sound-wise, though, uh, you know, was the time right for the kind of sound you guys have always pursued? I guess it was. You yeah, know? I'd say it was. I mean, I think if you write good songs, in like we would have come out in 1960, we would still be doing the same thing. I think we would have achieved the success because the songs are number one. You're responsible for all the lyrics, right? Yeah. When you're writing lyrics, so what do you tend to put uh, emphasis on? Well, it's my it, it's it's open it's open season for subjects. <coughs> I don't um, write about any particular subject, you know, constantly except for maybe women. Um, it's it's open to everything from suicide to love, you know, murder, hate, everything under the sun, you know. I wrote a song for my grandmother. Um, <coughs> you know, a, lo a lot of times I get stuff from the news, off the news and newspaper clippings and stuff like that. Or like last night I was looking at a, a drink menu and there was like all these names of these drinks. Mm -hmm. We started going, that's a great idea. And so like we're working on a tune that is like all about alcohol, but it's like all girls' names, like Bloody Mary, for yeah, instance, right. you know what I mean? Does, does Vince ever uh, ask any of this stuff saying, I come on, I, just, I can't say this stuff? No. Takes it all. Well, I mean, I, he respects me as a lyricist, and uh, I respect him as a singer. And when the melodies are done, I will put the lyric, I'll write a proper of lyrics to it. My attitude is the same attitude as everyone else's. We're, there's no stars in this band. There's no one who's the leader. Um, when I write a song, I'm representing all four of us, and it's the same attitude. We're the same. We're the same from the same place. An observation you made was that uh, throughout American rock and roll history, it's always uh, the crazy, wild, bad boys of rock and roll. Everything from the MC5, Iggy Pop, New York Dolls, to Aerosmith, you of course, the whole uh, crowd that you've spawned. Um, what is it about the uh, American uh, persona that uh, I'm just frustrated, you know, um, kids from bad families and uh, you know playing rock and roll? First thing is frustrated kids from bad families. Well, I mean, where we came from, we came from <coughs> poverty, you know. Me and Mick used to sleep in the back of cars and parks mm -hmm. for our rock and roll was number one. Always had the guitar, not always didn't always have something to eat for days at a time. Mm -hmm. And that tends to, to spawn a, a, a bitterness in you that comes out in the way you play. You know, being outspoken and determined to do it your way when everyone else is saying, you should be a lawyer, you should be a journalist. And I'm saying, I don't want to be a lawyer. It's boring. Mm -hmm. I want to be boring, right? You know, and uh, it's 
it's it's where we're from, and that's where that attitude does come from. And villains have always seemed glamorous, um, not only to us but to the kids. You know, I was always very intrigued by Keith Richards, and the whole thing goes along with it. Hmm. Do you think you can stick with that for a long time, though? Well, we don't have to stick with anything. Uh-huh. We just do what we want to do. Yeah. Right, the beast till it drops, yeah. It's not going to drop, because we're, um, we can change. We mm-hmm. grow within ourselves. Mm-hmm. We're not we're not doing cat scratch fever for the 4,000th time. Yeah. You know, nothing against Ted. He's a very, very nice person and a great rock and roller. <laughs> But it's obvious, you know, showing that the, that in that that particular case, uh, that you know you can't do the same thing over and over and over, and you know we you won't hear girls, girls, girls ever again. The sound of the album or the style of the music, it, we will grow and change. Like the Rolling Stones went from Exile and Main Street and stepping into something like Black and Blue. I mean, we're talking they went into a reggae style, but they were still the Rolling Stones. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. The competition these days is rough. Um, in other words, the kids that go to see you are probably the same kids that might go to see Bon Jovi or Cinderella or Poison. Or sure. Any other bands at the top right now, White Snake. Mm-hmm. Um, what separates you from these guys? Do you think you, do you consider them like uh, these? Can you find like an affinity? Among well, them? I mean, they're, those are all bands that are playing good music, and. That the better songs are, the, the audience you're going to draw that that those kids that are into good rock and roll, high entertainment. Um, we don't compete with other bands. We don't have any anything to compete with. <coughs> That's kind of you know we we compete with ourselves. We push each other to get farther and farther. I think when bands start worrying about what other bands are doing, their yeah. days are numbered. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's some bands that kind of fall by the wayside, like for example. Uh, Lost, kind of, uh, seems to burnt out its fuse. Uh. I think we're talking songs. Yeah, they, so, I don't think yeah. they've ever really been consistent with releasing um, good songs. Twisted Sister seems to have uh, yeah. disappeared from now. For now, missing in action. But I mean, as soon as we were missing in action too, we took a year a year off, and I'm sure if someone was sitting there doing an interview, someone said, "So Motley Crue is dead." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, these are been McDonald's. A couple of fish. I'll do a yeah, bird. fish. Some fries or something. And I'll do, I'll do some fish. McNuggets. Is there uh, a Coke? I don't know if there's McNuggets there. There's I a ordered them. But oh, if there's not, just a fish would do nicely. I'll do a fish. Thanks for <coughs> It's funny, the way you talk about it, it sounds like it's almost sort of subconscious and it's just working. It's like you're, good, you're fully in control of it, and you know you, you can't make a wrong move right now. We're very fortunate. We're very yeah. lucky. We, well, see, we're honest. We're loyal to the kids, and we're honest to ourselves. And we don't, we don't fuck around with with petty shit. We 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 will win or lose big. We won't fizzle out. We will either self destruct or we'll stay like you know like a fist. And that's the only way to do it. This you know, if we're releasing an album and your career goes down a little bit and you fuck around, don't care. You know that's that's boring. Yeah, I don't, don't want to go out boring. I'd rather, <laughs> That's right. I'd rather, you know, I'd rather die in a car crash than get out boring. I, I want to, I want to be remembered for, for being <coughs> exciting. It says here, like uh, one of the questions was whether one thing you'd always uh, been striving for was uh, big success, and somehow I, I get the feeling that you're the type of guys who would perform the same in front of an audience of fifty as you would for an audience of fifty thousand. Exactly. That's, um, that's very true. What, would it, what do you think would have happened to the band though if like, it, it fizzled out popularity-wise? Do you think you would have stuck with it still for a long time? I think so. I, I, we love the band. Yeah. yeah. I don't care if anybody buys the records or not. We're still going to release them because we love... I mean, I don't mean I don't care. What I'm trying to say is we're not making records for success. We're making records because we love writing great music. We love giving the kids, you know, yeah. records that are, that are happening. I, mean, I can honestly say that if the girls, girls, girls did not sell that we, that we have made the best. Is there another Coke flag? Yeah, oh, okay. We've made a great rock and roll album. And if only one copy was sold, the one I bought, I could still say we made the best album ever. But the albums don't go by, by record sales. God knows, man, U2 sucks and like they sell millions of records. But I wouldn't be happy in that kind of music. That's mm-hmm. like, it gets boring again. Mm-hmm. What about U2 sucks? Well, maybe we'll listen to them. Yeah,
It's not very good. Yeah. It kind of drags it. It's a little yucky, isn't it? Don't got the punch. Well, I'm moving on to other, uh, the bigger and bolder questions along the way here. Um, the, do you Thanks. seem to sort of project a lifestyle, a rock and roll lifestyle, fast life Thank parties, you. women. Uh, and obviously the kids get off on this. Is that really the way it works uh, in your own life, though? <laughs> Uh, what we do, whatever you read about us in press and stuff, that's that's how we are. It's that is that's not like hype, I made up. So, this, this is our lifestyle. It's the way that we are. Day to day, live fast, <laughs> die young. It's not always jumping on tables and pulling your pants down. Sometimes it's just in the way you walk. Yeah, your attitude. Right. You don't take no shit. But we don't give anybody any shit either. But that's kind of rock and roll we find. When we're in it for the kids, we don't care about the press or the radio or these video stations. We love to release stuff to these people, but we've been slagged so many times by conservatives that it's us and the kids. And that's it. If anybody else wants to come along for the ride, we're you know happy to, to, to cooperate. But if you start messing with us, that's when the motley attitude comes out. Let's go, great. We won't give you any videos then. We'll just release the packages straight to the kids. And, and that's, that's great, because the kids feel that. They go, man, that's great. These guys aren't going to write music like Toto or something just so they can get on MTV. Yeah, really. You know, that, that's really, that's terrible when bands do that. I get really embarrassed for them. Hmm. What happens when, say, uh, everybody turns their back on you and you have to go directly by way of mail or do you think kids will still support you? Yeah. I think it must be hard to operate in show business because you do have to kind of count out of some people. When you go to a town, you have to get linked with the biggest promoter in town so you can play a decent venue. Hmm. Um, when you deal with record companies, you have to deal with executives who are... But you see, we give them the record, and they release it. We give them the record, and they don't like it, they're still going to release it because otherwise we'll go to another label. They don't have to like us because we're going to the kids... And when you start getting a critic sitting there, you go into like Calgary, or you know, you go to Peoria or something, and some guy, you know, weighs 240 pounds, and he's 40 years old, and he's unhappy because he sits behind a desk, comes and reviews our show, and goes, they were loud, and they were obnoxious, and they were drinking. And, and they, you know, things like that. He doesn't get it. Why is he there? You know, mm-hmm. the kids should review the show. It, that's what I think. Give the kid in the front row a pin and let him because he's a rock and roll. F- he's a rock. He can critique rock and roll better than a guy that doesn't understand rock and roll. Mm-hmm. That's like the business side of it. We don't really ask the record company their opinion on what they think of our album. They know that the kids know what's going on, and we haven't let them down yet. Do you remember when you were like growing up and there were obviously bands you really got off on, but you know they slagged by the, the press and whatnot? How would you have critiqued like the show of say a band that? was always put down that you liked what would you have uh, how would you describe the experience of, of, of being it makes a you like the band more no but I mean like what, what like, uh, like what, with Kiss yeah Kiss they've okay. always right. they've always got that slag stuff uh, all that what, what were you getting on good music loud it's entertainment mm-hmm. real release uh, theater mm-hmm. and you're basically doing the same thing now yeah. And it takes a lot to get a kid out in front of an MTV with his remote control, you know, and his VCR in his bedroom these days. You got you got to be doing something high energy and exciting. You can't. Uh, I can't go down and <clears throat> just reproduce your album, how it sounds on the album, live. The kid would rather sit in his bedroom then just go see something like that. So you have to really put icing on the cake. you got to really be doing something up there on that stage. And it's hard to keep someone's attention for two hours on stage, too. You know, mm-hmm. It takes a lot of hard work. We're not dumb. We, you know, we're not, you know, s- sagging and falling apart at the seams and stuff. We're, we're very entertain, we're very much entertainers and um, almost like athletes in a sense, you know. If you could change anything that's happened so far, what do you think you'd change about what's happened with the band? I wouldn't change anything. Nothing. Yeah. It's pretty much all been 
a dream so far. For me, yeah. <laughs> I, this doesn't suck. <laughs> That's right. Did you really get married recently, or was that just... Uh, oh. You didn't? Vicious rumors. Just vicious rumors. What was all that stuff about uh, getting married to vanity? Well, it was my, my fiancé. Mm -hmm. Just want to set the record straight here. Because the thing is, we've had official reports here that you actually got married. Nope. <laughs> and, uh, a bachelor. Bachelor. Still getting boned there, eh? <laughs> Sliding your weasel. A lot of people have said, uh, especially you know, in the business here, that when they interview heavy metal guys, they're the easiest guys in the world to interview because basically they're just regular guys, but they, get, they like to go shit when they go out on stage. Have you found that to be the case in a lot of your peers? Yeah, I mean, you ever seen the movie Outland? Sean Connery, he's like this guy who's is a, a he's sheriff, sheriff out in like <clears throat> one of these things out in space where these all these workers are working. And this guy tells Sean Connery, this story, he goes, "My guys like to they work hard, but when it's time to play, give them a little slack because they like to play real hard." And these guys like work in this factory out in space, and when they go out in the evening, they just rip it up. And they're kind of like us. We work really hard, but we're we're allowed to play really hard. So then. We get all that out of us. We go back and work really hard on the music, and we're real serious. And then we go out and raise hell. You know, it's kind of like doing your homework. So you pass the test in a sense. When performing on stage, what what songs mean the most to each of you guys? Everyone's got their favorites. Yeah. Which one means the most, and why? Um. God. I don't know. They all. I like them all. Uh -huh. All different so, moods. Yeah. Is there any one song where you really can get into it? I dig myself doing. We have we do a medley of. Uh, yeah, that's kind of fun. Aerosmith and Zeppelin, ACDC, ACDC, Helter Skelter by the Beatles. I guess those are back memories. Yeah, in a sense, you get to be like in Rolling Stones or something for a second if you're doing yeah. a Stones song. Takes you back to your own roots. Yeah. yeah. And giving a hats off to the people that are responsible for us being here, uh -huh. influencing us. So, what do you think about all these bands that have come out uh, uh, in your wake? I mean, are they doing a good job, or do you think they're just kind of. Uh, Some are doing great yeah. jobs. Guns yeah. and Roses. Killer Guns and Roses, yeah. Cinderella. Well, well, that's great. Great songs. Mm -hmm. Good songs. Performing good. Good, good aggressive rock and roll. Who's just better off uh, giving it all up? I mean, who's like just uh, mimicking you? Who's aping you without really doing anything? I don't think anybody is. They all pretty much do a, a fairly good job. Decent. Worthy of some praise. That's a, that's a great compliment if somebody yeah. likes you enough to borrow something from you. God knows we borrowed from people. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll tell you, one thing. I believe we've done is set a new standard for the way that bands treat each other. We are we have no qualms about complimenting people in the press because people always go like, "I've made it. Nobody influenced me." Yeah. <laughs> you go what? You know they say, "Well, you sound like Aerosmith," and then some band will go, "Fuck Aerosmith." Well, hey man, I sound like Aerosmith. Thank you. That's great. That's really great. And we love to compliment bands. And now we find other bands like coming out in the press and saying. Yeah, we really dig Motley Crue. Where maybe it wasn't cool to do that a few years ago. Mm -hmm. It's real neat. Because all bands don't hate each other. That's just, that's just ego, ego insecurities when they start acting like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm motor mouth today. <laughs> it's good because I'm hearing the words and then it's not registering. Don't worry about there was, there was all that trouble with uh, with Vince's, uh, Vince's crash there. Yeah. And, uh, there's, I've never heard about this, but there was also something about your having problems with drugs. Yeah. Um, it's almost as if uh, you're sort of uh, living proof that the you know '70s style rock and roll bad boys still really do exist. Um, is it tough to live that down though? Um, I keep moving my feet, you know. Taking a stride. I just keep moving my feet. Uh -huh. 
I ain't gonna hang out while people try and examine why I was addicted to heroin. Mm -hmm. And I was fucked up. I had I had a year of nothing to do, but I I had a great time personally. (laughs) (laughs) Would you try to stop uh, other people from doing it though? Yeah, we wrote a song called "Dancing on Glass" Uh against drugs. Uh Like drugs suck. You know, they're bad, and they're you know. I don't really care about your body, what it does to your body. It's what it does to your head. Uh-huh. That's bad. Do you think it would have killed you if you kept it up? Oh, yeah. What got you out of it? It was time to go back to work. Mm-hmm. I was coughing up all this how about the people who like just pretend to be uh, living on the fringes, who pretend to be the bad boys? There's a few of those. A few of those mm-hmm. around, huh? Um, do you think they're is it equally as valid as you, though? As long as they, they do a good job, it doesn't really matter whether or not you're really that way or not. Uh, we, we're just us. Um, mm-hmm. If someone wants to say that they're from the street, and they came from a upper-middle-class family in West Covina, hey, all the power to them. But... They're lying to themselves, you know, and that's that's worse than lying to the kids, lying to yourself. I guess it kind of shows through anyway. People pretty much pick up the. Well, know, they're not the going to get the depth of the music if they're if they're saying, you know, oh, we're bad boys, and they're going, well, what do you mean you're bad? Bad has nothing to do with going to jail or getting in fights or drugs or anything. It has to do with your attitude. You know, you don't have to have done all that stuff. We just have made a few mistakes along the way. Yeah. You just want to know what it's like, you know, putting up a front, though, creating an image essential to what you're doing, and I think it's just more a question of being yourself. We're just ourselves. We yeah. never we never got a publicist yeah. and said, let's make this image. Yeah, right. You know, we used to... When we got our son to our record company, he used to walk in and they would shut the doors. You imagine, like, 1980 and 81, everyone looked like the knack, and here's these four guys doing what we do. The record companies did not know what to do with us. And that, like, I think that's where it all started. They were, like, one record company was, like, talking to another one, going, God, these guys are kind of scary. They're, they're scary, man. <laughs> What's wrong with these guys? And we're just big <coughs> guys from, from Los Angeles. But... The, I, I apologize. I understand, like, being a couple years older than the other guys in the band, um, well, th- does that make you feel like you can kind of step back and be detached from it? Or do you pretty much feel like you're part of the, part of the fold? I'm 19. <laughs> <laughs> so I can not think the, the, the age, st- the age, <laughs> age stuff uh, isn't an impending factor. Uh, doesn't, doesn't... It, you know, Doesn't I just go and shred. As young as you feel. Yeah. 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 Some days I feel 90. <laughs> Today I feel about 80. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it depends on the day. Yeah. Well, then again, I mean, the guys in Aerosmith, of course, you know, plodding the long as strong as ever now, and they're about, you know, if not a couple years older than you. Four years. About, about the same age. Do you see them as like a role model, which you're going to be like in another few years of the road? That would be great. Um, they got a few years on me personally, but just a couple. But uh, the Stones are great, man. I mean, they, yeah, they prove you don't have to have to be young to play rock and roll. Yeah, but then again, the lifestyle does change. So you gotta kind of oh, everything changes. You gotta tone it down a bit. And toning down isn't necessarily it doesn't slow you down. It's change. That's all. Uh huh. Yeah. It's just change. Uh-huh. You can, you know, can change without what people think mellowing out. I mean, as soon as you don't, like a, a year goes by where no one goes to jail and you know, no one gets a divorce or goes to a drug rehab and you're mellowing out, we're going, doesn't the music kind of decide on whether you're mellowing out or not? Right. Not the press releases? Right. Yeah. 